In this video, we're going to look at muscles that attach to the elements of the scapula. So we've already reviewed all the anatomy of the scapula, um, but now we're going to look at all of the different muscles that have an attachment site um, anywhere on the scapula. This might be an origin and it might be an insertion, and it doesn't really matter for our purposes. Um, so let's get started. The first thing we want to do is identify which different views we have of the scapula here. So the first one is going to be our anterior view, okay? This middle one is actually a lateral view, um, so you can uh, appreciate that because you're looking at the shoulder joint socket there or the glenoid fossa. And this one here is going to be our posterior view, and we know that because we can clearly see the spine of the scapula and the acromion process. I'm actually going to start with muscles that we can see attaching to the anterior surface first. So the first one and probably the most obvious one is that we know on this anterior surface we have this large uh, shallow depression called the subscapular fossa and so it should be no surprise that this is the attachment site for the muscle called subscapularis. We also have this coracoid process here which is going to have three different muscles that attach to it. Uh, that will be pectoralis minor, the short head of biceps brachii, and the muscle called coracobrachialis. The last muscle we'll look at on this surface attaches to this medial border on the anterior surface, okay, all along this medial border. And this is where serratus anterior attaches. So it's always helpful to look at a three-dimensional skeleton model to appreciate the pathway that serratus anterior takes to reach this border. It's going to actually end up passing in front of that big subscapularis muscle. Let's move on to this lateral view. I want to point out that there are two muscles that attach relative to the glenoid fossa. Uh, one just above on a bump called the supraglenoid tubercle and one just below on a bump called the infraglenoid tubercle. And these are the long head of biceps brachii and the long head of triceps brachii that attach. So you can remember, remember those in a pair. Now let's look at this posterior view and we'll identify again the large flat surfaces. So on the posterior surface we have this large flat surface um, above the spine for the muscle that we call supraspinatus. Just putting my numbers for these. Okay, so we have this shallow depression, the supraspinous fossa above the spine of the scapula, and inferior to the spine of the scapula, we have our infraspinous fossa for our muscle infraspinatus. We also have two muscles that will share an attachment site along the spine of the scapula and the acromion. They actually also attach to the clavicle as well, but that's not in this diagram. So we'll color this in and label it number seven. The first muscle here actually comes from above and inserts onto that surface, and that's trapezius. And the second muscle originates here and ends up traveling towards the humerus, and that's going to be deltoid. So again, you can remember those muscles in a pair because they share this one common attachment site. If we then look at this medial border from a posterior uh, view, we'll see three muscles that attach along the medial border in this kind of a pattern. We have one muscle that attaches to the medial border superior to the spine, one sort of right at the spine, and one inferior to the spine. And that's a trio of muscles that you probably already think of together. We have levator scapula, rhomboid minor, and rhomboid major. We also have muscles that will attach onto the lateral border. We'll find attachments for teres major, teres minor, and I'm going to relabel here 
the infraglenoid tubercle where the long head of triceps brachii will attach.